Hi, so welcome to lesson number one, module five of the Big Data and Hadoop Developer course. So in this particular lesson, we'll be having a look at something called join operations. So before we proceed with the lesson, let's have a quick recap of the previous lesson. So in the previous lesson or the previous module, we have learned what exactly is MapReduce and how the MapReduce job operation happens. We also learned about yarn, combiners and partitioners. Now in this particular lesson, we'll be having a look at something called join operations. Now, join operations are used to combine rows from two or more tables. Now, if you are coming from the RDBMS background, then the join operation will be very much familiar to you. Quite often, you might have to deal with two very large tables and both the tables might have a common column. Now, keeping this common column as the common key, you can easily perform join operation in RDBMS. We also have different types of join such as left outer join, right outer join, full outer join, etc. in the regular RDBMS world. Now having said that, the join operation is quite easy when you are discussing it in the area of RDBMS. However, when you come to the world of big data, the join operation is a bit difficult to carry out. The reason for that is the data sets that we are talking about here in the big data world are quite big that a direct join operation is not possible many times. Now let's have a look at what kind of a join operations we can perform. Now there are two main categories of join operations we can do a map side join or a reduce side join now in the map side join as the uh, term indicates the join happens at the mapper level and in the reduce side join the join happens at the reducer level now we will be visiting this in depth and understand how it can be done inside the map side joins we have three types you can do a replicated join a cross join or a composite join. Now why, why exactly we need to do a join operation, especially in the world of big data. Now when processing large data sets, the need for joining data by a common key can be very useful if not essential. For example, by joining data, you can further gain insights such as joining with timestamps to correlate events with a time day. So, even if you look at the retail industry as an example, in many cases, the retail industry depends heavily on join operation uh, to predict day-to-day -day outcome of sales. For example, every retail store usually has a customer file which will have the information about the customer such as the name, address and all and they keep a separate file for the transactions. Now, any business insight such as the highest spent customer or the lowest spent customer or the frequency of a customer's visit all requires some sort of a join operation to be done between these two data sets. So, in case of map side join, we can use a concept called distributed cache mechanism. Now, we'll be having a detailed look at what is distributed cache. We can, in fact, do two techniques. One is called distributed cache mechanism. You can even do a map side join on very large data sets as well. Now, when we have reduced side join, we will use the shuffle and sort mechanism in map reduce to achieve the desired output. Meaning, when you want to do the join on the reducer level, you might have a clear idea about the key value pairs that you are defining in your mapper code. Now first, let's understand the reduce side join. Now the reduce side join is performed by map reduce shuffle and sort mechanism. Now don't get confused. It is not a new function or no, not a new functionality of the shuffle and sort phase. 
the reduced side join is actually achieved by the shuffle and sort phase. Now, the input data set must have at least one field in common for the join to take place. So, if you are comparing, let's say, two data sets, we need at least one common column. Now, the map process both input data sets and emits join key as the intermediate key. What happens is that typically you will be having two separate mappers which will be running on these two separate data sets producing a common key and values. Now once these common key and values go through the shuffle and sort phase at the reducer level we can assume the common key to be the common column in the join operation and we can look at the values and perform the aggregation. Now, what we need to remember here is something called tagging. Now, just like in RDBMS, ambiguity is a problem. So, when you have a common key, you should be able to identify from which table the common key has come. So, in the world of MapReduce, we have to specifically identify from which mapper the common key has come. This is done by a process called tagging. We will have a look at this when we are doing the demonstration. So this indicates a pictorial representation of the reduced side join example. Now here, as we have explained before, we are having two separate data sets and there are two set of mappers which are running on both the data sets producing a common key and different values. Now at the end of the shuffle and sort phase, this is presented to the reducer to generate the final output. Now let's understand this concept by taking a real life example. Now as you can see from here, I have two data sets. Now the first data set, I will call it as the customer data. And the second one, I will call it as the transaction data. So in the customer data, I have fields like the customer ID, his first name, last name, the age, and the designation. For example, John Depp, aged 55, is a pilot, and his customer ID is listed there. Now, there is also a transaction table where you have transaction number and the date of transaction, customer ID, amount, and the category, product, city, state, and transaction type. Now, let's say we want to do a join operation between these two tables. Now, if you look at the tables, you can understand that the common key here would be the customer ID. Now, the business logic here would be to find out the total amount spent spend by a particular customer. So, in the first step, what I'm doing is that if you look at the first arrow, I'm defining a customer mapper which will run on the customer data set and which will produce the key value pairs in such a way that the key is my customer ID and the value is the customer name. So as you can see, the key is 400003 and the value is John. Now I'm tagging this mapper with a word called CUSTS or customers to be precise. Now, at the same time, I'm also having a transactional mapper. If you look at the uh, box just below the transaction data set, wherein I'm defining a logic to extract the trans customer ID and the transaction amount. So if you look at the uh, data that I have extracted, you can see that the customer ID is 400003 and the amount spent is $40.33. Now this mapper is having a tag of TXNS representing transactions. Now at the end of the shuffle and sort phase, these both data sets are combined and the common key here would be the customer ID. So if you look at the third arrow that I have, you can see that the key here is the customer ID, which is 400003. But if you look at the values, you can see that there is a value called John from the customer mapper. And there are two transactions for John, which came from the transaction mapper. So now in the reducer, I can simply do a logic to add all the transactions so that I get the total number of transactions for John and done. 
Now we will implement the same logic in the demonstration and explain this in detail. Having said that, let's have a quick look at the process flow, which I have already explained. So we are taking two data sets here and the customer data is processed by customer mapper and transaction data by transaction mapper. Now the customer mapper will generate customer ID, the tag as cust and customer name. The transaction mapper will give us the transaction ID, customer ID and tree XNS. Now the output of the mapper will go through the shuffle and sort phase. So all the same keys value will come together. And at last it is given to the reducer to perform the final aggregation. Now let's talk about a concept called map side join. Now a map side join is very effective when you have two situations. The first situation is that something called distributed cache where one input file is really big and the second input file is too small. In the sense you have a very large file which is divided and stored in a Hadoop cluster. That is your first data set but your second data set is very small. In such a case a concept called distributed cache can be applied which effectively does something called map side join. Now the second way to do this is using the composite input format dot compose method where input data sets are large files and are already sorted by the same key and have the same number of partitions. So this is one equals one join. Now let's have a prerequisite for map side join. So the first category is where we'll be having the composite input format dot compose method. And here the data should be partitioned and sorted in a particular way. And each input data should be divided in same number of partition. And it must be sorted with the same key. And all the records for a particular key must reside in the same portion. Now the second uh, uh, implementation is called distributed cache and that is what exactly that we will be seeing. So in the case of distributed cache the requirement is that one data set must be very small so that it can fit into memory. Now technically speaking the size of this small data set should be less than 100 megabytes or preferably less than 50 megabytes as well. Now let's have a look at the steps involved in a map side join using distributed cache concept. Now the first step is that the map reduce local task is run to read the small data set and stores it into an in memory hash table. And now it serializes the in memory hash table into a hash table file. So in the first step you read this small data set, serialize it, store it as a hash table file. Now move the data in the hash table file to the Hadoop distributed cache. Now the framework will populate this small file to each mapper's local disk. Now what happens is that imagine your big file is uh, divided into three and stored in three different data nodes. That means three mappers will be running on three different data nodes. Now the framework will present this small distributed cache file in memory on all three data nodes so that the joins can take place at the mapper level itself. So here we have a pictorial representation of the map side join or the distributed cache and as you can see from the picture we have a small table data which is read into a hash table file and this is given to the Hadoop's distributed cache so that it is presented on every mapper available. Now let's compare the reduce side join and the map side join. Well, the reduce side joins are very easy to implement. However, they have the drawback that all data is sent across the network to reducers. I mean, we can effectively do a reduce side join with the minimal code, but effectively we are not saving any bandwidth. It in fact increases the network bandwidth because all the data is being sent through shuffle and sort to the reducer. 
Well, the map side join offer good performance since we avoid the cost of sending data across the network by avoiding the shuffle and reduce stages. But however, it is very specific criteria that we have to meet in map side join. So in map side join, we must ensure that one data set is quite small. However, since the join is happening at the mapper level, we are effectively decreasing the uh, amount of traffic sent to the producer. So to summarize, in this particular lesson, we have learned the concept of joins. That's all for this lesson. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to raise a support ticket. Thank you.